So do pray for them and pray for the pray for the American boys going into Winona. It's it's a pity. It's very serious. It's very serious. Under the new direction of Winona, the the rector there is fully imbued with this new direction of Bishop Fillet. He's totally for it. And the young seminarians are coming out favorable towards the council. Oh, you can't condemn it all. You can't be so narrow-minded. And you have to obey. You have to obey. And you can read a very recent letter done by the fathers of families in France. A very interesting, a great letter. It's really, and they, they're writing to Bishop Follet. And they're basically saying, we have been duped and falsely led 50 years ago by the bishops. And it's not going to happen again. And please resign. You've already done enough damage, enough confusion, enough ambiguous language to, to dissolve Jesus Christ. It shows you don't want the kingship of Christ. You've already proved your cards. Please resign. You've done enough damage. And take out all the liberals with you, including Father Fluger. In one of his talks, he mocks Bishop Williamson. He makes a mockery of the resistance. He makes a mockery of... of uh, the, any opposition to Vatican II. You have to read that as well. Don't listen to me, just read his own words. He condemns Menzingen by his own words, and he's the first assistant. And he's leading, they're leading the, the ship right into the rocks, along with Pope Francis. And, and now there's recent talk of the resurgence of the, of the agreement coming back. Uh, the, the agreement is already in. It's already in the bloodstream. The poison's in. And the agreement, if it takes place, it'll be a big blessing because then the lines are drawn. And f certainly for the priests, it'll be a blessing because they can't sit on the fence anymore. It'll be clear. So pray for the priests that they have the courage to defend who we're ordained to fight for, our Lord Jesus Christ, the King, and the true Catholic faith of all time. And there, there should be no question about, on this, no second thoughts on this. Okay, this is a very um, brief little conference. I'd like to just touch very briefly on the interview with Bishop Fillet on May 11th, 2001. Now you might be saying, well, why are you bringing up a conference in 2001? Well, remember that that's, 2000 was the big year of the Jubilee. And uh, in this interview, we, we see in hindsight that everything that's happened in the last since 2001, the last 13 years, has, was already pretty much pre-planned with modernist Rome. <clears throat> and if any society priest read this five years ago, t eight years ago, sure, I know I would have. I would have said, well, this is just a journalist manipulation. And you know, the journalists are good at that. But in hindsight, we can look at this and say, wow, this has all happened. And it really is his thinking. It's a real liberal thinking. So I'll just bring out a few points. This is not meant to be long during, your, uh, during the snack time here after Mass, here in Veneta, Oregon. Uh, it's an interview with the Swiss Valaisian daily newspaper, La Liberté, Friday, May 11th. 2001. The first question, did you expect Rome to seize the occasion of your pilgrimage to renew the dialogue? Bishop Fillet, there were four running signs. A year ago, Monsignor Pearl, secretary of the Ecclesia Dei Commission, declared that the moment had come to deal with the society. We were surprised at the extent and the speed with which Rome changed to a position almost radically opposite. So all of you remember what happened in the year 2000. Cardinal Castrillon Hoyos invited the bishops to a luncheon. And uh, 
if, if I understand correctly, three of the bishops went. It was uh, Bishop Fillet, Bishop Galaretta, I think, or Tissi, I don't remember which, and Bishop Williamson. So they went to the luncheon, it was very friendly, very cordial, and uh, Cardinal Castrion Hoyos, who was previously responsible for the removal of the Catholic Constitution from the country of Colombia, a very serious crime. Pope Pius XI says, those who remove Christ out of public life uh, on the political or economic realm, they will endure the greatest torments in hell. So Cardinal Castrion was directly instrumental for this. So here he is meeting with the three bishops who were consecrated by Archbishop Lefebvre. He knows what he's up to. He's trying to, to uh, lure them into the net. Bishop Williamson, uh, if I have the facts straight, at the end of the meal, Bishop Williamson said, Your, Your Eminence, there are two different religions here. There can be no mixing of water and, and fire. But uh, apparently Bishop Fillet was hooked. He, he bit the bait. So this is 2001, a year later, so here's some of the proofs that he bit the bait. Uh, for whom is the discussion more complicated, for you or for Rome? He says, for us, there is a problem of trust. As regards to us, Rome has behaved in a destructive manner for many years. This attitude is unacceptable and must disappear. Rome's actual tendency is totally different. So he's basically saying they really mean well. We certainly have a right to ask ourselves why. And what are the Vatican's sensitive points? The question, answer. It is difficult to answer while the elements are still on the table. I would say simply that Rome seeks an extremely practical solution without approaching the fundamental questions. Rome wants a practical solution, a canonical agreement. Now, all of you remember Archbishop Lefebvre, he was offered many times a practical agreement. But he always said, first doctrine, first doctrine, first doctrine. And one time he signed the May 5th Protocol, he retracted it, he, re he re lamented that he signed it. Um, there's a recent article that just came out this past week uh, out of the United States District that said the Archbishop did not retract his signature. But if you saw the film of Archbishop Lefebvre's life, they're interviewing Father Cotard, a society priest that goes way back. And in that interview, he says, the next day, Archbishop Lefebvre retracted his signature off the May 5th protocol. So, because he saw it was a trap that would be, they would step into the trap of the, to accept the conciliar church. So, here Bishop Fillet is saying, Rome seeks an extremely practical solution, and he's going to go for it in 2012. Question, what do you concretely wish from these discussions? Answer, that Rome says that priests can always celebrate the old mass. And the other element is that the declaration of the sanctions be retracted. That's the so-called excommunications. So this is way back in 2001. He's already got this worked out with Rome. Uh, liberate the old mass and uh, lift the excommunications. But we know Pope Benedict XVI did these, but it was done in, a, in, a, in circumstances that are, that, that are just unacceptable. The motu proprio, for example, puts the Tridentine Mass and the New Mass as two rites of the same, two expressions of the same rite. So that's unacceptable for, the, for any Catholic with some sense. Um, Mark, what are the concessions that the society is prepared to make? We are ready to discuss. We even ask for discussion. And the Archbishop, of course, always wanted this as well. 
let's work out the doctrinal answers. We say to Rome, see for yourself. Our movement is a valid response to the situation in which the church finds itself. We ask that Rome consider carefully the reasons which are behind our attitude, which until now has never been done. And then the questioner asks, more concretely, what do you mean? Answer, Archbishop Bishop Fillet, we are ready to live with this world. Strange answer. We are ready to live with this world. Remember, that was all what Vatican II was about. We have to get in sync with the modern world. We have to work, the church has to adapt to the modern world. We are ready to live with this world. Dangerous words. When Christ put a barrier between the spirit of the world and the spirit of God. Who loves this world, our Lord said, who loves this world as an enemy of God. St. John says that. We are ready to live with this world which has separated itself more from us than we from it. This means recognition of the authority of the bishop, technically already effective. We feel Catholic, indeed. Our problem consists in knowing what is the reference. Question. Some within the church put as a prerequisite condition a recognition of all the councils. Listen to this. Answer. To accept the council, he means Vatican II, to accept the council is not a problem for us. This is 2001. There is, however, a criteria of discernment, and that criteria is that which has always been taught and believed, tradition, from which there stems a need for clarification. So to accept the council is not a problem for us. Was it a problem for Archbishop Lefebvre? <laughs> you bet it was. Are you already speaking of this concretely with Rome? Answer, no. And that is why the discussions are not getting anywhere. Rome tells us that it would take too long to discuss all the details of the differences. But if we do not discuss them, they will remain entire. Do you consider this urgent? Answer, not as much as for Rome. So Rome has really wants this, to get the society in. But question, but do you not fear that time will separate you from one another? Answer, on the contrary. Question, does the Society of St. Pius X speak unanimously? Answer, fundamentally yes, contrary to what some would like to have others believe. Question, who decides to have contacts with Rome? Who gauges the results? From the moment that Archbishop Lefebvre, answer, from the moment Archbishop Lefebvre decided to consecrate bishops, it was clear that relations with Rome were the responsibility of the superior of the society. Consequently, mine. So he's making these decisions. So he did have the discussions with Rome in 2010 and 11. At the end of it, he says to all the priests in the Corunum, we discovered that through these discussions, Rome doesn't have the faith, and we don't agree on doctrine. But he says, same issue, same letter, but we're going to seek the canonical organ or we're going to seek the canonical agreement anyway. Uh, another question. Um, and what, and the Society of Pius X, to what status does it aspire? Answer, we need liberty of action. The faithful who wish to follow the old mass must be able to do so without harassment. The solution which is offered to the fraternity of St. Peter is unlivable. We let the local bishops decide everything, they who are for the most part radically opposed to tradition. Now listen to this. This reason which is evoked most often, false in my opinion, is that by ritualism would be unmanageable. Now this is carefully worded. But in other words, he's saying by ritualism is manageable. 
And what, what is by ritualism he's talking about? The new mass coexisting with the Tridentine mass. He says it's, it's manageable. But the bishops rightly perceive that the liberty given to the old mass as a question of the post-conciliar reforms. That's why Bishop Follet could tell the cardinal in Italy after, I suppose, they witnessed a new mass in, in Florence, Italy, and it was a, at a monastery uh, with incense, traditional vestments, in Latin, facing the altar, and Bishop Follet told the cardinal that had Archbishop Lefebvre seen that mass, he would not have had to do what he did. Because it looked traditional, it smelled traditional. But what do you think Archbishop Lefebvre would have said? He would have said, if it's the missile of 1969, it's intrinsically evil. It cannot be accepted. It's a bastard mass, illegitimate mass. So even if it is facing the altar in Latin with traditional vestments and Gregorian chant, it's still poison because the, the Missal itself is a modernist mass, because it incorporates modernism, and incorporates Protestantism, and Catholicism all in one Missal. And because of that, it's poison. It's like this good food here, and please help yourself, this is not that formal, but it's, if someone puts poison in this, in this, uh, whatever this is, turkey, you know, it's, it's, it's got good meat, it's got some fat, which is not the best, and if there's poison, you're going to eat it. And that's what the new mass is. It's mixed with poison. All right, and then, the, and then this is the famous answer that is quoted quite often. The question, uh, questioning, what do you wish, to, what do you wish for, the, the question asks. Bishop Fillet says, that gives the impression that we reject all of Vatican II. However, we keep 95% of it. It is more to a spirit that we are opposed, to an attitude towards the change given as a postulate, all changes in the world. Therefore, the church must change. So he's saying it's more the spirit of the new mass that we're against. It's more the spirit of the council that we're against. And is that the case with Archbishop Lefebvre? Absolutely not. He wasn't against the spirit. Obviously, he was against the spirit, but not so much as the actual council itself. The very texts themselves are, are loaded with poison and time bombs. And he continues, there is here a subject for discussion because it is undeniable that the church has lost a formidable influence in the last half century, and so forth. Uh, and then, and then another question, what would reconciliation with Rome change for you? Answer, Rome would recognize this position as valid, at least fundamentally. So this, this is what he's been saying all along. We want to be recognized as we are. But Archbishop Lefebvre was very realistic. Of course, the chickens walking into the fox den, they want to be recognized as they are. And the foxes are going to say, yes, we do recognize as you are. We recognize you as a nice supper. And that's exactly what happens to the traditional communities that, that come under modernist Rome. They become dinner for the foxes. So um, it's not enough just to say we want our right to have our mass. The archbishop, as you, thought, as you know, he didn't think like a woman. Pardon me, ladies, but a woman is built. God gave the woman to think subjectively. The woman bears children. She understands goo goo gaga. She understands what the baby's trying to say. A man, you know, doesn't know. He scratches his head and says, "What's, you know, the the, the diaper is filled and smelling, and he's wondering, what's, the, why is the baby crying?" But the mother picks up. She knows. 
And God built the woman to be about the home, about she's about the curtains and the carpets and the plants and the smells of the house. But the man is about the building and the roof and the and the foundation. And the men think differently from women. And even modern schools are admitting this that boys and girls think differently. But this is the Catholic Church has been saying this all along for centuries. So uh, Archbishop Lefebvre thought like a man. He thought like a real man and a bishop, of a, a man of a bishop and a man of God. Because he didn't think just for our own little society. He was thinking for the good of the whole Catholic Church, the common good of the whole church, which is the survival of the faith in the Mass. That's why he said it's not enough if you give us our Mass and a bishop and run our seminaries. He said it's he said, we can't come to terms unless it's on the faith, unless Rome professes the Catholic faith. So, oh, so it's womanish to think just of our own little congregation that we have our right in our mass. Because a woman thinks of her own home, and that's, that's what God built in. That's good. That's normal. But, but bishops shouldn't be thinking this way. And Archbishop Lefebvre was a man, and he thought of the whole good of the Catholic Church. And it's not enough that we get our own uh, recognition. He understood that. It's the whole conversion of Rome he was after. And he says it three times in the consecration sermon in 1988, that there can be no agreement with Rome until Rome comes back to tradition. And then, um, the, one of the, coming to the end of the interview, it's not that long of an interview. A valid one among others, or the valid one. Talking about um, the reconciliation with Rome. The position of Rome, diplomatically and politically speaking, he says, will certainly be that of pluralism. Even if she believes the, cop the opposite, we ourselves are very prudent. For us in the church, there are some valid options and others that are not. So here he's, he, you see he's ready to work within this pluralistic system. Just give us our recognition and everything will be fine. But Archbishop Lefebvre, who was realistic, he understood it's, it's the superiors who form the inferiors, and not the inferiors who form the superiors. So if we make an agreement with Rome, they're the superiors. And we have to answer to their bishops, to the modernist pope. And they will do everything to crush tradition, as has been proved by nine communities already. Do you suffer from divisions within the church? Question. Answer. When in one's family things go wrong, it hurts. I do not suffer directly from the excommunication, but the state of the church touches me. That, yes. And, uh, and then, <coughs> um, I'll, I'll skip most of this for the sake of the kids, but at the end, in the last question, he's asked this question. In Freiburg, the, 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 the interview brings up about the, the horrible gay pride parade of 1999 that happened in Europe. In Freiburg, the question, the, a Catholic city, there was no similar reaction to the gay pride of 1999. And the answer is, not a quote from scripture, not condemning it, not a clear uh, condemnation of this vice, but this is the answer. And it's an answer of uh, any politician would give. When one is half dead, one no longer reacts. <laughs> so, so anyway, this, uh, it was originally in the French, and this is a translation done by some of the good Quebec re resistance up in uh, Quebec City in, in, in Canada. So you can read it and read it carefully, but this is the famous uh, interview where he talks about the 95% of Vatican II as acceptable which of course is, is unacceptable. 
So anyway, any questions? Yes. How can we get a copy of this? Oh, uh, it's on the internet. It's it's everywhere on the internet now. Just look up on, on any of the major websites. 2001 interview with Bishop Fillet. But read it carefully and see what the underlying parts. And in hindsight, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> in hindsight, you can see everything was already laid out with Rome. Yes. Question. Okay. Yes. Can I ask you an unrelated question? Yes. Father, we read that you and Father Pfeiffer gave the last rites to a prisoner in uh, Kentucky. Uh, he died, and 10 minutes later came back alive, and, and you gave him the last rites? Yeah, that was Leo Hayden. And Leo was, he always wore a scapula, was very devoted to the Rosary and the Virgin Mary. So, yeah, we were bringing him communion over the past year. And when I got the call, from his son, and I had just had the last class in the seminary, he told me he's dead. So I said, I'm going to come over because the soul lingers in the body often. And uh, as long as the body is warm for about an hour, up to three hours, you can anoint the body, hoping that the soul lingers. So his son said he was dead. So I immediately left. And when I arrived, Father Pfeiffer had also had had got the call and he was going at the same time. So I got a little lost on the Kentucky roads. Father Pfeiffer got there just before me. And uh, when I walked in, he was breathing. And so he got extreme unction and he got the absolution and we prayed the rosary. His brother, who was a novice auto priest, he was there also and the family. So uh, I counted a great grace for him. The Virgin Mary um, gave him that grace to, to die with the sacraments. And as you know, that's a promise from the Virgin Mary for those who pray the daily rosary, that they will not die without the sacraments. They will have the sacraments. So anyway, pray for him. Leo Hayden, he was, uh, he was one of those tough guys and, and a very heavy smoker. So he would take his oxygen tank, his oxygen, and then take a puff of the cigarette. And that's how he lived his last few years. So <laughs> anyway, pray for good Leo, pray for his soul. Any other questions? OK, we'll close there. And God bless you all, and persevere in the faith. We'll say a little prayer. And in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. St. Joseph, St. Faustina, St. Marcel, and the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen.